Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. I'm Grodbert and today we'll be diving into crouching using additive animations and inverse kinematics. Now, if you don't already have a model, you can go download the folder from the description and place it in your Projects Assets Models folder. Otherwise, if you've been following the series, still do that, but choose to ignore the files that share names. Before starting, check the pinned comment to see if there's any correction. Sandbox is always changing, so some things may not apply since the release of this video. We got our running man now, but players also want to crouch sometimes. Sure, you could make a whole new animation set for walk crouching, that's what's usually done, but we are lazy India and we got places to be. Come on, get out of here! What if I told you we could add crouching with a single animation? Nay, a single frame because that's possible with the power of additive animations. Although we'll need to learn a little theory before getting into practice this time, last time I used the example of adding a breathing layer onto a static pose. Let's break that down. Here we have our idle animation, a characteristic NPC-like up and down motion. If we were to add it as is to the static pose, our model will explode. That's because what it's doing is take the distance of the bones from the center and adding that value onto the new pose. Well, no wonder it explodes, some bones are very far from the origin point. Well, if that's the problem, then why don't we just move all of the bones near the center? No, really, this is what that looks like. This crumpled up meatball is what's called a delta animation, delta from Greek meaning difference, which is a very apt description because the process to make one requires you to first subtract a pose with another. Literally, pose A minus pose B equals delta, the difference between those two and how far the bones are from the center is what's used to store that value. This can also be used to store the movement of an animation. We just need to subtract an animation with its first frame. Because the difference between an animation and its first frame is, well, the rest of the animation, a dead breathing delta on top of a different pose to breathe some life into it. Great, but what's this got to do with crouching exactly? Well, if we can get the difference between two animations, that means we can get the difference between a crouching pose and a standing pose, and if we then add that difference on top of our walk animations, we will have a crouching walk, all with a single frame, just like promised. And I guess crouch run too, but I don't think you should allow your players to run while crouching. This concept can be applied to many things, for example, in our game Death Card, we want to reuse our animation set between all humanoid enemies, however, some have widely different proportions. The solution is to get the difference between our big guy and our regular guy and then add it after all of the animations. If you're coming from Garry's mod, this may sound familiar because it's what allows all of those Pokemon player models to use the Gmod player animations. There, they call it the proportion trick and it was boiled down to a list of instructions and a copy and paste but we see the concept is the same, you subtract an animation from another and then this here adds that on top of every animation. This also means that you can use Terry's animations and Anning graph for your player models, which is what we did for another one of our games, in this house. We'll probably have a separate fish bite explaining this further, but let's move on for now. And that's the theory part on, let's get into some practice. Back in model doc. The animation list just keeps growing, so let's tidy it up a little. Select all of the walk animations, right click and group them in a folder. Call this walk. Do the same for the run animation and now add the crouch pose in model doc. Then to subtract an animation, you right click it and add an anim subtract markup. For the animation target, select idle and keep the frame at zero. It can only get the difference from a single frame and that's our delta done. Now head over to the anim graph. We'll only need a single frame this time, so add, animations, single frame, and then select your crouch delta. Now, blend, and you see you have both add and subtract, in case you want to do the subtraction in the anim graph. Select add, now for the base, connect the work blend, and for the additive, connect your delta. Connect the add node to the final pose, and now he's crouching. We don't want to crouch all the time, of course, we could make a shrimp or state machine with a boolean, either stand up or crouch. But instead, let's do something fun. Combine what we learned last episode and this episode. You may remember me mentioning how 1D blend is really better suited for blending poses. Well, boy, do we have poses to blend now. 
create a new float called duck. Why not crowds? Well, because that's what the citizen calls it, which means that once we are done with the player model, you will be able to hook it up with the default player controller, then add a 1D blend with two entries, idle and crowds, the latter having a value of 1, set duck as the parameter, connect the crowds delta to the crowd spot, and now we need another delta, one that, even when added, it does nothing. We'll need literally nothing. Go back to model doc and duplicate your idle animation, call this idle delta, like we showed earlier, we can subtract an animation with its first frame and it will store all the differences that come after that. This means that, at frame 0, there is no difference, which is just what we needed. Since this is such a common operation, they made another anim markup that saves you a little time called anim linear delta. All this does is subtract itself from frame 0. Back in the anim graph, if we were to add the animation clip, you'd also get all the bobbing motion of the idol, since this is a delta animation, unlike crowds which is just the pose. So instead of dragging the animation clip, add a new node, animation, single frame. Pretty self-explanatory, select idol delta and use frame 0, which is nothing as we said, Connect it to the 1D blend, connect the blend of the two poses to the add node, and now you have a crouch slider, a little more work for the programmers, but maybe now you can crouch run if you want. You can even get fancy and add some bounciness to it with damping. If you expand the list, you can change from no damping to bouncy spring. This way, it's going to overshoot the value and correct itself when you crouch. Tension is how fast the spring will be, and damping is how strongly it will try to correct itself. About 110 is fine. Now when you crouch down, your character will overshoot a little, although annoyingly it just plays with the value, and it's not clamped. So if it shoots over the float's max value, it just freezes. You can fix this by making sure the value limits of the blend are wider than those of the parameter to leave some space for the overshooting. Ugh, I guess I can't stop ignoring it any longer. Why is the foot going under the ground now? Did we do something wrong? Well yes, but actually no. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, it's fine to add something and then correct it later. With some sort of corrective function, luckily for us, we have a way to fix that with inverse kinematics. If you've already heard of a case, it's probably through some procedurally animated spider dev blog clickbait or baby's first blender rig making a character dance, both cases with their feet firmly on the ground. To understand IK, first you need to understand FK or forward kinematics, so called because moving a bone will also move the next bone in the hierarchy, hierarchy being the order at which bones are connected with children coming from the parents all the way up to the top of the hierarchy being the root, usually the pelvis. FK is the default because imagine how nightmarish posing will be without it. If you've been following along, then you can guess inverse kinematics means the children control the parents, but if you move the parents, the children move, and then the parents move, and then the children move, and then that will create an infinite loop. What we need is for the bones to follow someone outside the hierarchy, a true sigma, what we call IK bones. In Blender, you can see that the bones of the leg constantly rotate themselves to find an arrangement where the foot is aligned with the IK bone. I use the IK bone to animate the walk cycle so the IK and the foot always share position. However, the IK bones are in a different hierarchy, their own. Any changes in the main hierarchy isn't reflected in the IKs. A change like an additive animation that's affecting all bones. To use IK in Sandbox, you have to first make an IK chain in Model Doc. So go ahead and add one, search for IK chain, name it foot underscore R. The end effector bone is the last bone in the chain, in our case the right foot, so select that. As for number of bones to add is how long the chain will be, plus the effector bones. 2 is fine since we'll need the lower leg and the upper leg. You can also get fancy and do 3 for stuff like an arm IK which includes the shoulder bone. Press OK. Down here we can see our chain and reveal the hierarchy, consisting of leg upper, leg lower and foot. Foot what? Foot 1? Well, I guess foot was already used. Uh, who cares? We're not done yet. For some reason, you have to set your IK target here instead of being prompt to it earlier. By default, it uses the end effector bone, which is wrong, don't do that. So change it to IK foot R. Now go make another one for the left foot this time. With those set up, we can view where the IK bones are by turning on the bone view. Should be right around here or not, but I was so sure to include them, 
And I did, I don't make mistakes, and when I do, it's to segue into something else. Let's talk about bone cooling, like when I taught you how to make LODs, or I mean, like I meant to teach you, uh, everything in a model affects performance, number of vertices, materials, meshes, and yes, even number of bones, animation info. Yo, this displays the root motion speed. Uh, anyways, because of that, if model docs is that you, as a bone, is not influencing any part of the mesh, then you are gone. This includes our IK bones, which we only need for animation. If you want to summon them back, you will have to add a new node, called bone markup. With this, you can select a bone and specify not to discard it here. Or if you don't want to go through every bone, you can go on the bone markup list and change the settings from there. Wow, didn't know lists had settings, by default it's set to aggressive, removing every bone with no influence set it to none instead, and here they are now. With this setup, we can now head back to Animgraph. Here's what you're gonna wanna do. Add a solve IK chain, add two slots, select your left and right IKs, connect it after the animations and into the final pose, and uh, that's it. Sharing Polas. If you play it now, you can see that the feet are on the ground. The FK kinda worked at a glance, but the fact the parents of the feet are affected yields us unintentional results. Meanwhile, it's fine in the IK because, between the crouch and standing pose, the IK bones only shift a little to the side, and after the delta is added, with no parent to worry about, they are still on the right track. We'd rather use the IK's hierarchy than the feet on this one, so we solve for IK instead. Now that we know how to do both IK and additives, we can learn about another common feature that uses the two of them, lean animations. Many realistic games layer a pelvis lean on top of a running animation and use a concept called wish velocity to control them, basically how fast the character wants to move in a direction but can't due to realism stuff like inertia or the centripetal force. Think zombies leaning on a curve because the player is strafing, or a player leaning forward to sprint but is bound to a heavy object. The player uses Wish X and Wish Y to control this lean and is connected to a 2D blend that is later added. Since this is a minor detail, and for brevity's sake, I won't be showing you how to do it. However, if you've been following along, I'm confident you could do it on your own. I didn't expect this episode to be so theory heavy, but don't worry, next episode is going to be a lot of animgraph because we'll be making our character take aim and shoot. See you on the other side.